I have not had any discussions about that particular issue, but I will look it up, find okay. out what's going on. So as you look it up, I'd also like you to get back to me, if you don't mind, to explain the disparity in REO rates. Do you know what an REO is? An Oreo? R, no, not an Oreo, uh, uh, an R-E-O, R-E-O. Real estate? What's the O stand for? E organization? Owned, real estate owned. That's what happens when a property goes to foreclosure. We call it an REO. Mm -hmm. And FHA loans have much higher REOs. That is, they go to foreclosure rather than to loss mitigation or to non-foreclosure alternatives like short sales than comparable loans at the GSEs. So I'd like to know why we're having more foreclosures that end in people losing their homes with stains to their credit and disruption to their communities and their neighborhoods at FHA than we are at the GSEs. I would, I, I would be extremely happy if you'd like to have you uh, work with the people uh, who do that. Well, Mr. I, Carson, that, respectfully, that was my day job before I came to Congress. So now it's my job to ask you well, to I'm work with the people. I'm talking about the people. At uh, are you familiar with Amwe and what it is? With who? Amwe. Amway? Amwe. Come on, Mr. Secretary. Um, now, I asked you this when you were here last year, and you asked me to be nice to you, and you turned to your staff, Amwe, and you have an Amwe director, and we wrote you a letter about it, and Amwe, Office of Minority Women and Inclusion. Do you have an Amwe director? Do you work with an Amwe director? Well, of course we have a, an office of... My Amway, not Amway, Amway. We have, we have... Do you a, know who that person is? We have... Do you know who that person is? I cannot give you the name. Okay, would you do me a favor, would you find out, and would you send me a note back so we don't ever have to repeat this again? We can send you a note on that. Okay, thank you. It is well documented that health problems such as lead poisoning, asthma, and injuries from trips and falls, especially amongst our senior population, can be linked to substandard housing conditions. Combined, these conditions result in billions a year in health care costs. Many of those most at risk of developing these conditions reside in public and federally assisted housing. Yes or no? If less left unaddressed, do you believe the substandard public housing conditions pose a risk to tenants' physical, mental, and emotional health? If left unaddressed. Yes or no? Can you ask me some questions yourself? You don't get to dictate what my line of stuff. questioning is, reclaiming my time. You're a very smart you man. Can so it you all understand you the question, please answer it. <laughs> yes or no? Yeah. If left unaddressed, which I believe they are unaddressed because this budget does not reflect the need. Do you believe the substandard public housing conditions pose a risk to tenants' physical, mental, and emotional health? Uh, you already know the answer to that. Yes or no? You know the answer. Yes or no? I know the answer. Do you know the answer? Yes or no? Reclaiming my time. You don't get to do that. No. The time belongs to the gentle lady. This is Ben Carson getting taught the basics of his job by Democratic members of Congress. And look, while this may be embarrassing, who would really expect the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development to know anything about housing? This hearing took place amid criticism that the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, has introduced proposals to scale back housing subsidies for lower income Americans. And if it sounds like that goes against the core mission of this department, Wait until you hear about the EPA. Now, it's clear that Carson is unqualified. He got this job as a consolation prize for pledging loyalty to Trump after dropping out of the presidential race in 2016. In fact, nothing in his past qualifies him for this position, as he's a former neurosurgeon, which is horrifying. But it's his disdain for it, his arrogance, that is so egregious. It's one thing to be smug, but after you've humiliated yourself, after you as the HUD secretary thought that a question about disparities in REO rates was about Oreo cookies, after you thought you were allowed to reclaim your time from a congresswoman, after you thought the Office of Minority and Women Inclusion was Amway, which as far as I know sells bath and beauty products? And I get that this administration's entire MO is to install people in each agency who oppose that agency's core mission, but that these people are totally fine sacrificing every shred of their own dignity in the process, are fine making a mockery of our entire government that they're supposed to represent, says a lot about the quote unquote best people that Trump promised to hire. And in case you thought this performance in and of itself wasn't bad enough, 
Here's what Carson tweeted afterwards. Oh, REO, thanks Katie Porter, enjoying a few post-hearing snacks and sending some your way. <laughs> Which is funny because he's grossly incompetent. To be clear, the only way that joke works is that all sides understand that Carson's performance was a complete sham. After watching his testimony, I would be embarrassed if I was a Republican. That this is someone that they publicly put forward to run an entire department and failed to grasp even the basics of his job. It is a travesty that a single cent of my tax dollars pays the salary of someone so woefully unqualified to show up to work every day. This administration may have come into power on the false pretense of populism, but all we've seen thus far is ignorance and greed.